Hey, 22 veterans a day in this country take their own lives. Vets, I love you. You have a place here. We'll put some links in the description below to some folks who can help you. Don't fight this fight alone. We back to blue over here. We support Leo. Scab, how do you do that? Well, we don't break the damn law. And finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. Well, it's Sunday. It's about noon. Uh, we've been camping for about 24 hours. I just wanted to say this before we start the video to the Smith family, to Mr. Freddie and Miss Connie. Thank you so much for allowing us to come camp. Uh, I love you more than you'll ever know. It's fitting that it was on um, your property. We did this. <clears throat> Last time I was here was with uh, my boy E about 25 years ago. So his son came with us, Joseph came with us, Ricky Ricardo came with us, and I just want y'all to know to, to, to Ricky Ricardo and to Joseph, man, I love y'all. It's been a great trip. Thank y'all. Without getting too mushy and too much into it, hey, let's start at the beginning. Let's go back yesterday, 24 hours. Uh, so without any more, further ado, join us, won't you? Well, thank you, Scab, for that fine introduction. Now, listen. I want to say again to the Smiths, thank you so much. Let me say this. When we first got there, I filmed about a minute's worth uh, overall look at the camp. When I looked at it today, I realized I had filmed myself uh, telling Ricky Ricardo and Joseph what I was doing. So we scrapped that part. I apologize for that. Here's the deal, guys, real quick before I get into the video. Shout outs to Donnie B. All Day, D-Bad. If you're not subscribed to Donnie, do so. He's trying to get to 10,000. He's marching on. Get over there and subscribe to my brother from another mother. The other guy I want to shout out is Joe Love from Steel Forge and Fire Sword and Knife. That dude is awesome. He's trying to get to 1,000. He should be there already. Let's get him there. Now, let me say this about the Smith property. It's a piece of property way back in the woods uh, on the St. Mary's River. Now, it doesn't have water, doesn't have a bathroom, none of that. But what it does have is beautiful, beautiful scenery. They use it to barbecue some, to hang out some, to boat some, to fish some. So it does have a couple bonuses. It has a fire pit and they have some chairs out there. Praise the Lord for some chairs. Now, what we're going to do in this video, you're going to see a lot of different stuff. You're going to see some different equipment, some different tools that I'm using. You've seen reviews on all of this, so I'm going to show you some scenery. This should be about three videos, guys. The third video, I'm going to put Leaving Camp. That's going to be the title. I need you to watch that one because I'm going to need your input on a couple of big, big decisions I got coming up, okay? Now, in the meantime, we got the proper chopper from Work Tough Gear right here going to work now. None of this stuff is live. There was one thing that I cut down live. I had to use it for support for my tarps. We literally used everything. If it was a natural reef resource, we used it or we left it where it was. Now, let me say this. Many people have asked if I ate the fish. If you watch the video of the fishing story, you would know that I catch and release. Here's why. I don't like fish. And before you say, oh, Scab, you've never had it the way I've cooked it, I bet you would. I bet you don't want to go to Vegas on those odds, okay? It's not that I don't want to like it, guys. I've tried to like it. And let me, let me say this quickly. There is a difference in liking something and having to survive, okay? If I had to survive, I'd eat the fish. I promise you. That's just the thing. So I've always just practiced catch and release. Now, if Joseph had wanted to eat it, would have cooked it up, son, and I'd have ate it with a smile, whether I liked it or not, because he wanted to do it. But but just to answer y'all's question, I've always had more of a catch and release, and I do, guys. I know I say stuff smart about my tree-hugging friends, but I try to conserve as many resources or only use what I need. I picked that up from my grandfather. Now, this is, this never was meant to be some out in the woods, roughing it, real man dude stuff. This is the first time I've been camping probably, man, in 40 years, and I'm 50 years old. Guys, I've set certain goals for myself over this next decade, okay? 
One of them is to become a woodsman and a, and a skilled camper. My guy Richard went, Ricky Ricardo is what we're calling him. He spent a lot of time in the woods. A combat veteran, great, awesome dude, but he's got a skill set that really, really made this trip awesome. And I want to say thank you to him on a lot of levels. He took a lot of time in just teaching Joseph. And we had a great time with Joseph being there from fishing. If y'all watch that video, now I'm gonna link that particular video or fish story to it. Now, right here, we used a tarp, probably a 12 foot, 10 to 12 foot wide, 25 foot long tarp. We used ratchet straps. I didn't want any sagging. Now those chairs you see there, obviously they were on the property. And again, they were a godsend, man. That, that was just perfect. It saved, cause y'all know I'd have took some chairs in. Now right here, what y'all see me cutting it up front, I was trying to get some stanchions cut. I wound up having to cut uh, some more sturdier ones. But right here, Joseph is making some tent stakes for our tarp. And he actually did a phenomenal job. He's using that Ned Foss knife, my Carta handles. And he did a great job. He, he had a great time, man. And he definitely rocked it on the fishing. Now, Joseph has got to be six foot. And I just asked him to kind of walk around. You see his wingspan there. That's that's a pretty good shelter, guys. We had a storm front come through about 12, 12.30 at night, rain, uh, some moderately heavy winds, okay? And and the shelter held. None of us got wet. No equipment that, that we had that you know, needed to stay dry got wet. I did coat all of my blades, all the blades with, with Eagle Tears. Everything held up well. Thank you again, Mr. George, for sending that. I, I It really made a difference. Now, right here is the one live thing I cut down. I did use this for tent poles. It's the only thing. I used my cold steel rifleman's halt. I took, I tried to take this and I took the Chogan. Both have great blades, but both have hammer poles. The one thing I learned on this trip, old Scabber needs to spend a little more time in the woods. Now, before anybody said, well, Scab, hold it up. Good, listen, I didn't grow up in Boy Scouts or Woodchucks or RAs or, or you know, Davy Crockett's Coonskin Cappies, whatever that y'all did, I didn't do. Not that I didn't want to, I just, my parents gave me a choice. Hey man, play sports or, or do the other. I played sports. So at 50, I'm trying to learn wood skills. And that's what I wanna, I wanna, I wanna um, hammer home here. When you're watching my videos, especially some of this camping stuff, kayaking stuff, woodsman stuff coming up, I say it with the knives and I'll say it here. I am a novice at best, but I've set some goals, okay? And I want you guys to come along for the ride with me. Now, it was about 80 something degrees yesterday. And you'll see here in a minute, I got my, my pants tucked down in my socks. Old Scammer ain't getting no ticks on him, son. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. And apparently, I'm not going to film what I'm doing there either. It wouldn't be a Choir Boys Cutlery venture if I didn't, you know, do something right off camera. I will say this. On this Cold Steel Rifleman's Hulk, that is a 30-inch handle. I took that off my Warhammer. I put the shorter um, handle on my Warhammer. It just made the difference on both tools, man. Now, here's my EDC, my Nomad EDC from Work Tough Gear. I actually took three blades designed by uh, Zeke Minacho. I used them a lot throughout this video and throughout this camping trip. And here's the thing, too. I got a lot of footage. I think I can get three, maybe four videos out of it, but it didn't really get in the way. Everybody that, that went, the three guys that went, we all participated in it, except Ricky Ricardo. And, and because of his service time, because that he just don't want to be on camera, and we're going to respect and honor that. Now, here's the other side. Right here, it goes to work. It did a great job. What I'm going to do throughout these next three few videos, guys, is I'm just going to say, hey, this is what we use. This is what it is. Because I've got reviews on everything y'all have seen so far. I do have reviews on. Please check those out. But I wanted to get some work in. Here's my, my Nomad Field Knife. Now, this right here is a piece of Florida Fatwood Gold. And I'm going to do some chops on it in a minute and show you. I'm not doing it to show you the chopping of the knife. I'm doing it to show you 
this piece of light or not we found. Now, I'm gonna do a fat wood fire right here and I'm dedicating it uh, to all, to all, to everybody that's a subscriber of Choir Boys Cutlery. I don't care if you're a content creator. I don't care if you're a casual sub. I don't care who you are. This fat wood fire is dedicated to you. This fat wood fire is brought to you by people all over the United States. Cause yes, I used a little bit of this Florida fat wood, but if you've sent this channel fat wood and a lot from North Carolina, Georgia, Oregon, Washington, Massachusetts, Michigan, Canada, from all over the US, this fire comes from all of you guys. And I love you very, very much. Now, I brought up the novice at best for a little situation after the fire, and I'll explain it as I go. Look at that piece of Florida bacon right there, son. That just an incredible find. Now, my guy Dominic sent me some of these uh, beeswax wafers, and I use them. I use some some quick start stuff from Gene and Kayla Johnson. Thank y'all so much. I use some Douglas fur shavings from my guy Redneck Renegade. Thank you. Like I said, if you have sent me fat wood, I used it. I used that little uh, grading box that Carl Ruger sent me. I graded up a bunch. I, I've spent a lot of time doing that. And all of you are represented in every single one of my 2,885 subscribers. Guys, this Fatwood Fire is for you guys. I love you. I really, really, really do. Now, again, behind us, you see another vantage point of our shelter. Now, when night came, we did kind of lock down the flaps but it worked out perfectly, worked out really, really well. Let's see, one, two, there it is, there it is. Again, I'm learning, guys. I was just so dang happy to light one out in the woods when it mattered. Y'all don't know. Now, if I'd have thought about it, I'd have done it on the ground and not on this stump and had to dump it. Luckily, again, my guy Richard was there, and he just kind of worked with me. We went from, from starting a fat wood fire, and again, guys, this is for everybody there. There's a lot of healing in a fire. There's a lot of cleansing in a fire. This trip was a healing trip for me. It was also my last one because I dang near killed myself right here. I'm going to show you two times where old Scabber, Scabber, I, there's one. Go ahead and hit myself in the foot, and I was headed right to turn that thing off and edit it out, and I said, no, you know what? I always talk about being a novice. I, I'm not here to show you just the good. I want to show you everything. And right here, this is one of my better moments. Hit myself right in the head. Right in the head. That's what I get. Now, now to now, I survived it. Lesser reviewer probably would have quit right there. I, I powered through. Now, here is one of the best pieces of kit we took. The S-Wing, I think it's a Camp Axe. This thing's about, this one uh, Ricardo brought, it's about 15 years old, sharp. I took the uh, bastard file that, that D-Bad had sent me as a thrower. I took it with me, honed up all of my, my camp tools, the axes, the, the shovel you see there in the background, even the chogan that about killed me. I took that, that file, so thank you D-Bad. I did absolutely use it on everything out there and it really, really worked out well. Now right here, it, once you get hit in the head, you're not prone to swing it quite as hard. Just some nice, easy strokes. Let me take this. We've got about a minute and a half or about a half a minute left. Guys, I love y'all. I got two more videos coming. Now, you can see that little shed back in the back that, that they keep some different stuff in. We didn't get into that. We didn't want to mess with that. But in the video tomorrow, you'll get a lot better look at the overall thing. This is just kind of an introductory. Again, the fire is to all my subscribers. I love y'all. Mikey says it best. Never give up. Never surrender. I'm scab. You're not. Let's go camping, son. I'm out. Gone. Today.